Today in the Joy of Editing with Dave Cully, it's Mastering Color Tone Range with TK Magic Mixer. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly, and I want to wish everyone a happy new year. Today, I want to look at the TK Magic Mixer. Now, it's great for doing black and white conversions, but it's also great for working with color tonal ranges. In other words, how light or dark different colors will be in your image. And it can dramatically change the overall look of an image, which I'll show you today. I'll try to keep this video relatively short, but I have three different examples. I have this image, a landscape. I have this village image, and I also have a portrait to try the TK Magic Mixer on. And so we have a nice variety of images. Let's start out on this landscape image. By the way, these are all stock images. By the way, if you don't yet own the TK Magic Mixer, I'll have links in the description below this video where you can pick it up. It's only $10. Use my promo code DK15 and save 15% off the $10 price. If you look at my desktop right here, I have the TK Magic Mixer. Now, the TK Magic Mixer controls Photoshop's channel mixer, which is really kind of hard to wrap your head around, but the Magic Mixer makes it really easy to use. So here's my TK Magic Mixer. I'm going to click the plus to add a TK Magic Mixer. Now, you'll note down here at the bottom in the left-hand corner, LUM for luminance. Make sure you have this checked on when you want to work with color tonal ranges. Now, right now, you don't see any change to your image. And you see the little eye here? You could shut off the layer by clicking this eye, click it again to turn it back on. It's the same as clicking the eye on the layer over here, but it's real convenient to shut the layer off right here with the Magic Mixer to see a before and after. One thing we can do is click this randomizer button and just see what kind of looks we can get in this image. And I really like this, so watch. I'm going to click this. And watch the image change as I click it. Every time I click it, I get a different look here. So you could go randomly through here and find something you like. And if you go too far and you said there was one further back that I liked, you can go and rewind this. Click the rewind button right here and go backwards or go forward with this button. And then you can reset the Magic Mixer right here by clicking on this button. You can save presets in here. I'm not going to get into that today. But you also have color channels that you could try. You have red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, and yellow. Now, they're not all going to look good. But if you find one that looks good, it's a good starting point. And I always like to start here. So I'll click on red. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Here's green. I kind of like green. Here's blue. Not so good. Here's cyan. I don't like that. Here's magenta. Don't like that. Here's yellow. Don't like that at all. So I'm going to come back to green. If I want to make my green tones lighter or my yellow tones lighter, let's say my yellow tones. If I take this yellow blue slider and if I drag it to the left, I'll make all the yellow tones lighter. You see that? Or if I move it to the right, I'll make the yellow tones darker, but I'll make the blue tones lighter. I want to make the yellow tones a little lighter just to add some life into the foreground. Maybe something like right above about here. Now, here's the cool thing about the Magic Mixer. If you look up here in my properties panel, this is uh, Photoshop's channel mixer. Whenever I adjust this down here, these these sliders will change. But if you were just doing this with the Photoshop channel mixer, if I adjust the green slider or the blue or red slider, if you'll notice this number 100%, that is the total. You always want to try to maintain that total to keep the image in balance but the magic mixer does it for you for instance if i take this green slider watch these other two sliders if i take the green slider move it to the left a little bit the other sliders are moving in tandem with it isn't that cool so you're always maintaining this 100 percent and this is what makes the magic mixer so effective and magical i'll click the eye in my magic mixer here's before and here's after so i do like how i brought some life into the light areas of the foreground. Now, usually what I like to do is, after I tweak these sliders a little bit, we don't stop here necessarily, although you could. But what I like to do next is come down to the bottom of the Magic Mixer and click this button right here. And when you do, you get a color luminosity adjustment and it sits under the Magic Mixer adjustment. And now you can further tweak all of the color tonal ranges. For instance, I can go to the red slider and make my reds a little lighter or darker, depending on what I want. And I'll just maybe make them slightly lighter. Maybe the yellow tones, maybe I'll 
maybe I'll just leave them about where they're at and let's try the greens. Do we want to make the greens a little darker? I think I do. I really like them darker down in this area. And now I'll adjust cyan, which will affect the sky. Do I want to darken that up a little bit? Yeah, maybe I want to darken that sky slightly in cyan and maybe in blue slightly darken that. On my TK combo panel, I'm going to click the before after button. We started out here and now we end up here but a really nice adjustment with the Magic Mixer. Now let's try this image of a village. I'm gonna go ahead and click the plus in the Magic Mixer. The loom is checked on. This works with color tonal ranges. If you're really not sure what you wanna change in the image, again, use the randomizer button just to see what kind of looks you can get there and then tweak from there. I'm gonna reset this. I'm gonna go with channels again. This is generally the way I do it. So here's the red channel, here's the green channel. And you know what? I'm gonna stop right here because I like the green channel. Let me shut off the layer. Here's before and here's after. I like the darkening of the roofs. So what I can do is on the cyan red channel, if I move this slider to the right, I'll make the reds lighter, but I don't want them lighter, I want them darker. So I'm gonna drag this slider to the left so I can darken those roofs even more. Isn't that cool? And and I'll stop right about there and I think that looks pretty good. Now at this point once I get this magic mixer adjustment then I usually go and click on this button for color luminosity and do some tweaking from here. So I can make those roofs a little bit darker by just dragging the red slider to the left a little bit. Let's see what I can do with the yellows. It's going to affect the trees. Maybe I'll lighten up those trees a tiny bit and let's try greens. Maybe I'll darken the greens up a little bit just to add a little bit of nice contrast in the trees and then we'll go to cyans. Do I want to lighten the sky? Probably not. I want to darken the sky a little bit and it's affecting the water down here too. So I'm going to darken this up a little bit maybe to right there and then blues. Maybe just pull the blue back a tiny wee bit. It's not going to be much in the way of magenta in here, so I'm going to leave it pretty much where it was. Maybe my roofs are a little too dark, so I'll take the red slider and drag it to the right just a little bit right there. Let's see an overall before and after. I'm going to go to my TK9 combo panel, click this button right here. Here's before. We started here and we ended up here. Isn't that a really dramatic change? And I really like it. And now one final example. Let's try this portrait image out. Again, we're going to add another magic mixer. I'm going to click the plus. Now, remember, you got to check on loom. If you don't check on loom, you're going to get a black and white conversion, which is cool. But in this case, I want to work with color, so I'll check loom back on. You don't see a change here. If I shut this layer off, here's before and after. No change to start with. I'm going to go right to my color channels. Here's red. Here's green. Here's blue. Here's cyan. Here's magenta. I like magenta. Here's what I'm going for in this image. If I shut off this layer, see how we have a lot of contrast on her, which looks really good, but I want a more softer portrait. So I'm going to turn this back on and that magenta channel is giving me a nice soft look, but I'm not done here. I think I'll take the magenta slider. We can move it to the left if we want to lighten this up a little bit more and eh, maybe right about where it was. Now let's go to yellows. Now, if I move the blue slider more to the left, I'll lighten our face up a little bit. So let's move that blue slider to the left. See how our face starts to lighten up? And I think right about here, I like this nice soft look. And now I'll click on this button so we can adjust the color luminosity. And what I want to do is on the coat here, I want to take some of the contrast out. I think there's some blue in that coat. I'm going to take this blue slider and drag it to the right. See how the coat lightens up a little bit because I want to take some of that contrast out to make it a nice soft looking portrait. We can work with yellows. We can darken the face up and the sweater she's wearing if I move it to the left. But if I move it to the right, we can lighten that up. And I think I want to lighten it up just a little bit. Yeah, a nice glow in her face. It looks really good. Now, I really love the portrait adjustment, but I don't like the background. I like the background to remain the same. So here's what we can do. This layer is selected. I'll hold my shift key down and click right here. Select this layer. I'll come to my combo panel and click on the right side of this group button to put this into a group. And now what I want to do is select my subject and subtract out the background. So here's what we can do. Now on the combo panel, if I click this button, I'll select the subject. But if I click it right now, I'm going to get an error message telling me, hey, this is a group layer. You can't do this. I'll just click OK. I'm going to open 
open up the group, click on the magic mixer, and now click this button to select the subject. And you'll see we have the marching ants on the subject. And now I'll click on the group to make it active and just come to my TK9 combo panel, click on my layer mask calculator, which I love so much, click on active selection and click this button to apply. And now you can notice here we have this group, which is only applying the effect of the magic mixer and the color luminosity layer to the subject itself. So if I shut off this group, here's the before. A nice high contrast image for the portrait, but if you want a more softer image, magic mixer to the rescue. And now we've adjusted the color tonal ranges. Now, if you want to on this group, you can come to layer opacity and click right here and maybe pull the opacity back a little bit and just, you know, tweak it a little bit to maybe right there. Let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after, but I like that much better. Well, there it is, everyone. And again, I want to wish you all a happy new year. Thanks for watching today. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a like, share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so that you receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then... Happy editing.